In this question of the week, we're going to look at how to create a stator coil similar to this image that you'll see here. This was actually the one that was used in the question. There's a lot of unique challenges here. You'll notice that it looks like a sheet metal type part where they've been separated and there's a loop at the top. Specifically, you'll notice the little gap that's been created in there. And that's something we're going to take a look at as we go through this example. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with a sketch on the top plane. And because this is a circular shape, I'm going to create a circle that basically represents this that I will use for construction. You can always select any entity and change it to construction geometry at any time. The next thing I want to do is I want to establish the distance between the two uh, vertical entities that we see in that shape. And to do this, I'm going to create a piece of construction geometry at the bottom of my circle. You'll notice I look next to my cursor to make sure that this line will be both horizontal and coincident to this arc. Now, in this case, this will be construction geometry as we're not going to draw a horizontal line, but instead we're going to draw two vertical lines like so. Now, the width could be one way that we could have established this, but we can also establish the distance between these two lines using an angle. A trick in SOLIDWORKS is to dimension two endpoints in a common center point. When you do this, SOLIDWORKS will change the dimension type to an angular dimension. And you'll notice that my geometry turns from blue to black, indicating that it's now fully defined. We'll also determine what the length or the depth of this part is by adding a dimension here. And its distance separated from each other will be simply dimension from this construction line to this point here. Now you'll notice that this line is fully defined. Both the endpoints are black. We want to do the same thing over here. Let's go ahead and add this dimension of a half of a millimeter. And in this case, instead of adding a five millimeter dimension, we'll just select these two lines and choose the equal relationship. Once this has been done, we can go ahead and extrude this. And you'll notice that I didn't draw rectangles, but instead single lines. This is because we're going to use a thin feature type extrusion. When you don't have closed profile, SOLIDWORKS will by default choose the thin feature type. And in this case, we'll change the condition to midplane. We'll also can change the condition of the extrusion to midplane as well and set this to 50 millimeters. Now that we have this done, we can go ahead and start drawing the connection between these two points. There's several ways of doing this. You could do this with thin features or with closed profiles. Uh, I'm going to look at a unique way to do this. We're actually going to draw a sketch back on the front plane behind this part. As we start this sketch and take a look at it, we know that we want the uh, angle of both of these pieces to be uh, symmetric to each other. So we're going to go ahead and draw a center line up the middle and we're going to turn on dynamic mirror entities. What this will do is as I sketch any geometry, you'll notice that that geometry will be created mirrored onto the other side. Now the remainder of this arc is a little bit tricky so we'll just drop this for right now. Once you're done with dynamic mirror entities you can turn that off. What I'm going to do is drag the endpoint of this arc onto the midpoint of this material. And to make sure that this is tangent, one of the other ways you can accomplish this when you know you're working with horizontal geometry is to make the endpoint of the arc in the center horizontal to each other. We'll also ensure that these two radii are the same uh, diameter and radius as well by adding the equals relationship and then putting a radius on it. The last thing to do here is establish the angle between these two pieces of geometry, in this case 90 degrees. We could have also done that by selecting the two lines and choosing the perpendicular relationship as well. Now you'll notice that I've drawn a sketch off the back plane here. What we're going to do is reuse that geometry on a sketch on this front face. To do this, we're going to go ahead and use Convert Entities and select three of the sketch entities from this sketch. When we press OK, you'll notice that they're transferred onto our current sketch plane. Again, we're going to use a thin feature extrusion, and in this case, we want to do an up-to-surface type extrusion. The best way to accomplish this is to simply double-click on this back face, and you'll notice that the material is offset slightly. 
This is again because of the thin feature direction, which we'll then set to mid-plane. We want to do the same thing one more time, and in this case we'll draw the sketch on this back face and repeat the same steps as before. To quickly select all this geometry, you could likewise right-click and sel choose Select Chain, but in this case you'll notice it grabbed all the geometry. So that's not what we want to do here. We will select these one at a time. And again, when we press OK, the geometry is copied onto that surface. We'll repeat the same step as before, choosing Extrude and double-clicking on the front surface and setting the thin feature direction to mid-plane. Now that this is done, we're going to create a sketch that represents the loop on the top, but before we do this, the sketch is no longer needed and can be hidden. Because we've created our geometry symmetric about the center of the part, we can utilize the right plane of our design to do this. We'll go ahead and choose right plane and insert a sketch on it. And when we look normal to this, again, we can use convert entities to copy the geometry and simply create tangent arcs. Tangent arcs, when drawn directly perpendicular to a line, will actually create a perpendicular arc. This is a unique way that you can use this tool to draw geometry in different ways. Now that that's done, we'll go ahead and create an extrusion, and in this case, we'll choose a mid-plane extrusion type. Because we created our original thin extrusion using the mid-plane type, we know that the top plane falls about the center of the part. We can then use this to mirror these three features over to the other side of the part. This quickly allows us to uh, duplicate our efforts on the other side of this design. Now all that's left is to create a pattern of this geometry. To do this, we'll want to have a center line, and we'll do this using the right and front plane of our design, and we'll choose Reference Geometry Axes. Then we'll go ahead and choose to create a circular pattern. Because we want to pattern all the geometry in this body, this is a great example of where we would use bodies to pattern as opposed to individual features. The thing to remember here is to make sure that the instance count or the number of uh, pattern instances is equal to the that uh, dimension we originally used. And one of the ways you can do this is to establish an equation. In this case, we want it to be 360 degrees divided by we want that dimension that we created in this original sketch back here. And I'll show you how to add that equation here. Simply double click on the feature and typing equals starts the equation manager. We want this to be 360 degrees divided by and what we want is a dimension that was used earlier on. Once we do that we can press OK and now if we decide to make any changes to this original sketch, for example, changing this to a 30 degree spacing, you'll notice that the number of instances increases. But we'll go ahead and set that back to 45 degrees in this case. So there's a, an example where you can use equations to add a lot of power to your part. Now there's one last thing that we want to do here, and you'll notice that there's actually a gap between each one of these coils right here. What we want to do is join all of these bodies together. To do this, we'll start a sketch on the top plane, and we want to convert some geometry. Now, what we're looking for in this case is actually where the material starts and ends inside of that part. So I'm going to draw a line between these two. Then we can go ahead and we can use that same tangent arc tool that we used before. And again, if we pull it directly out from that line, it will establish the tangent relationship for us automatically. Let's go back to a shaded view and the last thing we need to do here is simply extrude this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose to extrude this up to the vertex here and in the second direction we'll do the same thing. You'll notice that it will automatically join the bodies together as well. We went from eight bodies to seven bodies and now we want to pattern this feature using the same axes we used before in this feature there are a few things you're going to want to keep in mind here what we want is we want to join all these bodies together and SolidWorks in order to do this needs to enable an option here called geometry pattern and you'll notice that gives us the feature scope option and in this case we'll choose to join all the bodies together 
and we now have one solid body for our entire part. So there's an example of how you'd create a part like this. We looked at how we could use equations, add some unique sketch relationships, and create patterns and mirrors all throughout this. If you have any t uh, questions, please submit them in any of our social media sites, including the SolidWorks Facebook page, Google+, or Twitter account.